Today is the 17th Sunday of Easter. It is Mass of the Author of the Father. We have the following announcements. There will be Mass on Monday at 8 a.m., but there will be no Mass on Wednesday. Rest in peace to Mary Rose of Garda, whose funeral Mass will be here on Monday at 12 p.m. Also, Tom Halpin, whose funeral will be on Tuesday at 11.30 a.m. This week's second collection will be for Seminary Chelsea. There will be a Father's Day breakfast on Sunday, June 20th at the ICC Social Hall from 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Please join us on Tuesday evenings during the month of May for a presentation of the grocery in the grotto at 6.30 p.m. Beginning Saturday, May 29th, we will move back to the cemetery for the 4 p.m. Mass. Following this Mass, we will have a cookout. We are in need of new altar servers. Anyone who has made their first Holy Communion and older is encouraged to help us. Please call the rectory to sign up. Please join with me in saying a prayer to St. Michael. St. Thank <laughs> you. 
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, filled with the Holy Spirit and in anticipation of Pentecost, we remember the promises we made at our baptism, and we praise God for His gift of water. Peter stood up in the midst of the brothers. There was a group of 
about 120 persons in the one place. He said, My brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand through the mouth of David concerning Judas, who was the guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was numbered among us and was a lot of his share in his in this ministry. For it is written in the book of Psalms, May another take his office. Therefore, it is necessary that one of the men who accompanied us the whole time, the Lord Jesus, came and went among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day on which he was taken up from us, become with us a witness to his resurrection. So they proposed to Judas called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice and Matthias. Then they prayed, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this apostolic ministry from which Judas turned away to go to his own place. Then they, have got, then they gave lots to them, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was counted with the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. The responsorial song. The Lord has set his throne in heaven. The Lord has set his throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord has set his throne in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he put our transgressions from us. The Lord has set his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, you mighty in strength, who do his bidding. The Lord has set his throne in heaven. Keep 
them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one just as we are one. When I was with them, I protected them in your name that you gave me, and I guarded them, and none of them was lost except the son of destruction, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. I speak this in the world so that they may share my joy completely. I gave them your word, and the world hated them, because they do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I send them into the world, and I consecrate myself for them so that they may be consecrated in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. When you read in our parish mission statement, it's supposed to give you a synopsis of what our purpose is as a Catholic parish in the Diocese of Allentown. And our mission statement says that we are dedicated under the patronage of St. Clair of Assisi. We bear the four marks of the Catholic Church united in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. We become the body and blood of Christ, living as a family of faith and a school of prayer through our apostolic and community-minded endeavors to spread the gospel. Baptized with these four marks, like St. Clair, we proclaim the paschal mystery of Jesus Christ. If you are who you should be, you will set the whole world on fire. Our mission statement is actually encompassed in the readings that we hear for this the seventh Sunday of Easter. All three readings contain an important aspect of who we claim to be as a people of God. And so I'd like just to take a few brief moments today to try and show you how the readings and our mission statement tie themselves together. The first part of our mission statement says that we are under the patronage of St. Clair of Assisi. It doesn't mean that we just have a name. It means that we need to imbue the witness and the virtues of St. Clair of Assisi. And it's so summed up very well in the mural that we have to my left, your right. In the year 1224, an army of soldiers marched to Assisi under the orders of Frederick II. They were to destroy the city. Now, this seems rather odd because Frederick II was the Holy Roman Emperor. He was a great, great grandson of Charlemagne. And the Holy Roman Emperor's purpose was to protect the papacy. But Frederick II got too caught up in the ways of the world. He forgot about his Catholicity. And so in his quest for power, in his quest for prestige, in his press for money, he saw the church as in its way. He believed that the Pope had too much power in the church. And so he decides that he will crush the church so that he truly can rule the way that he wants to rule. As these mercenaries entered into a city, the first obstacle they met 
was the convent of San Damiano, the home of St. Clair of Assisi and her community of sisters. By this time, St. Clair, because of her acts of penance and mortification and an austere life, was beginning to feel the ramifications of arthritis that would literally cripple her. She would sleep on the floor, she would do all kinds of acts of penance, and so it was becoming very difficult for her just to be able to move. And on the day of the invasion, she was in bed. Her sisters came to her and informed her what was happening. And Claire knew that the convent would inevitably be destroyed. But she got up, she put on her habit, went to the chapel, put the Blessed Sacrament out of the tabernacle, put it in a monstrance, and had her sisters help her up to the high wall of the convent. As she reached that wall, the ladders from the invaders were coming up. And Claire put the monstrance on the wall. And a brilliant light came out of the monstrance. And the invaders began to fly, flee in fear, blinded by the light. When Claire put the monstrance on the wall, she knelt in prayer. And this was her prayer. O oh Lord, protect these sisters whom I cannot protect now. And they claim that they heard a voice. I will keep them always in my care. Very similar to the gospel today, isn't it? John chapter 17, called the high priest prayers of Jesus is prayer to his father in the agony in the garden before his crucifixion. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, Father, keep them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one just as we are one. When I was with them, I protected them in your name that you gave me. I guarded them, and none of them was lost. Just as Jesus was praying for his apostles, for his followers, Claire is praying for her sisters and the faith of the church. We too are a part of that today. After Mass today, we have a baptism. Baptism of a little one whose mother and father, whose family, want to make her a part of the people of God, of the family of Jesus Christ and his Father. You and I, in our baptismal promises and in the promises that we'll make later on this afternoon for our baptism, we renounce sin. We put aside all the old order. All of the things that tempt us from the love of God. And with the pouring of baptismal water, we become a new creation in Christ. We are raised to the status of God's sons and daughters and an entitlement to heaven. Frederick II forgot all about that. He forgot about the importance of God in his life, and his whole life was centered on wealth and power and prestige. And he wished to put anyone aside who would dare defy him, even a holy father, and even a simple convent of goodness. The second part of our mission statement says that like St. Clair, we are marked with the four marks of the church. One holy, Catholic, and apostolic. And we hear that in the gospel. 
Make them one just as we are one. We are united in God the same way that Father, Son, and Spirit are consubstantially made one. This is saying that the church is one, that it cannot be divided. Because if it was divided, it would cease to be. But because we hold the because we hold and proclaim the unity of our oneship in Jesus Christ and His Father, we can never be severed and we can never cease to be. Sadly to say that too many people have want to sever themselves from the church. The ways of the world have gotten away. And we are just as connected to Christ as He is connected to the Father. A few weeks ago, on Good Friday, we heard Jesus' final words from the cross. Looking down at the Blessed Mother, He said, Woman, behold your Son and nodding to John, the beloved disciple. And in nodding to John, the beloved disciple, he said, Behold your mother. Jesus was entrusting to John his greatest gift, his mother. We have God our Father, and we have the church for our mother. Therefore, we must protect it. Look at last weekend when we celebrated Mother's Day. Yes, there are those influences that want to go on and complain about mothers who are adult and mothers who abandon their children. And like that court case in Winersville, the mother that was abusing her children and had them locked in cages. That's the world. But it isn't our faith. And we live in a world today that wants to rewrite history and try and remove all the bad things out of history. The bad things happen to teach us a lesson never to do them again. Just as the great philosopher George Santiana said, let he who was ignorant of history be condemned to repeat it. How often we're ignorant of history. We're also ignorant of what our Catholic faith is all about. We live in a world today of a canceled culture. If it goes against the way that we want to believe today, we cancel that past culture out. As Catholic Christians, our religious liberties and freedoms are constantly being challenged by secular humanism and relativism. Things that want to cancel fact that we are one nation under God. Second mark of the faith is that we're holy. That the Holy Spirit, who we celebrate next weekend, comes and inhabits us, and He guides us, and He controls us, because He is holy, and He wants the best for us. We are reminded that we are a church of sinners. There's nobody perfect here. And we even have learned in the last decade that the priests and the bishops that we put on pedestals, well, they can get knocked off because they too are sinners. In the ordination ritual of his homily yesterday, Bishop Schwert went and said, we are going to have to make our priests do a little bit more because we have so few. And so we know about the twin in the parishes, including our own. But in the same way he said, I really don't want to believe we have too few priests. I believe we have too many. And that seems weird. But Bishop Schwert went on to say, we have too many priests that haven't been prayerful, haven't been loyal, haven't been faithful, 
that have been more like Frederick II and concerned about themselves and the people of God. And they've hurt the church and many people have walked away. We need to be holy. And as the gospel says today, Jesus prays that these followers are consecrated in the truth. And in order for us to be holy, we need to speak the truth. Yesterday, Matt Kuna was ordained to be order of deacon, the only one we have. His life was consecrated to God. Taken aside, pulled separate, made holy for our good. And you know, there were a lot of people there that were happy and clapping and joy-filled. But how could we forget when we realize that our priests are human and they make mistakes? When they, like us, are sinners. We believe that a priest should be held to a higher standard. Yet in the same regards, shouldn't we all as Catholic Christians? We forget all too quickly the Paschal mystery, the passion and the death and the resurrection of our Lord, where he suffered for our sakes. Through his suffering, we have remission of our sins, but it is also infused with faith, hope, and love. And that unites us perfectly to Christ. We are also called in our quest to be a Catholic family, to be Catholic. And that means universal. And that means we're loyal to our church. And there are too many Catholics today that want to be Catholic, carry Catholics and pick and choose. We are the only faith, the only faith that has done what Jesus commanded. Go to the ends of the earth and spread the gospel. And you can find Mass anywhere in the world today. Or many of these other fly-by-night churches you won't. But we're called to be true to that faith. And to be proud of what we share it. As I said, the, the gospel tells us that we need to be truthful. So we're all called to live that gospel. <laughs> the last attribute is apostolic. And Sid read that for us in the first reading today. Yesterday at ordination, we saw the apostolic succession. Just as Jesus made Peter the first Pope. And then after that, they named bishops and then they named priests. Matthew will be ordained a year from now as a priest for you, for the good of the church, for the good of the church of the Diocese of Allentown. For that reason, a priest always has to be ready and willing to go where God sends him. And Matthew is very much prepared for that as any priest should be. Now why we might talk about the apostolic succession of priests and bishops, you too have an apostolic succession. You do it as mothers and fathers. You do it as grandparents. The baptism that we celebrate today. We are handing on the faith. And we need to be truthful about that. Our kids need to know all about what it means to be a Catholic Christian. It's not a magical rite. It's not a social event. But it's rather us becoming part of the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ that St. Clair believed in to ward off her invaders. The real presence of Jesus that we receive in Holy Communion is that God abides in you and me. And that makes us different from every other living being in the world.
because we are not of the world, but rather we are part of the Father in heaven. And heaven is our true home. Nearly 800 years after St. Clair of Assisi turned away invaders of her convent in the town of Assisi, we as Catholics today still respond to similar threats of evil by holding high the Eucharistic presence of our Lord. In doing so, we are showing the world that Christ himself, body, blood, and soul and divinity, is the ultimate answer to all evil, affliction, sin, and death. He is the source of all power, not ourselves. In the end, the higher supernatural order of God truly conquers and transpires the material world as God ordained it to be. And we will all rest with God in paradise. But until then, sinners though we may be, we work at becoming one holy, Catholic, and apostolic. We believe in the real presence. And today, we turn to our patrons in thanksgiving for showing us that message. I believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, Lord of the Father and before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God of God made, unsubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was informed of her to Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified in the of Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He has sent him into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to us, the living and the dead. And his kingdom will not have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess that I have the Lord and the Lord and the Lord and the Lord and the Lord as we prepare for Pentecost, we know that even as we live in the world, we do not belong to the world. This truth calls us to pray for all people in union with Christ who wills that no one be lost. That the church may always be guided in choosing candidates for the sacred ministry of holy orders. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord in our prayer, that God will live with people as they love one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all Christians may put their faith in God's love and find unity in one fold, one shepherd. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that in this community we may be protected from the evil one. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer to those who have died and may live forever in God, who is love, especially Kathleen. I'm um, sorry, Catherine Warren. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gentle Father, as long as we love one another, you live in us, and your love will be complete in us. Receive these prayers as signs of our charity, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, and your Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, and salts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
God our Savior and grant us confidence that through these sacred mysteries they will be, there will be accomplished in the body of the whole church what has already come to pass in Christ her head who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of His only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by His blessing forever and ever. Amen. May He, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance forever and ever. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner in this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven forever and ever. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Please join and sing our closing hymn number 617, Joyful, Joyful, Joyful.